Hey guys, before we begin, just a reminder that the charity drive is still going on and we're in the last week, so now's the time! Donate to a charity that benefits children. Send proof of that donation to joechristmascharity at gmail.com. On December 6th, one winner will be selected who will get a loose European exclusive Tiger Force Psych Out from me, a complete 1985 eel from HCC 788, and a New Jersey Comic Con exclusive Boss Fight Studio Hacks Series 2 Red Blasted Land Orc from JoeCustoms.com. Also, two runners up will get a Cobra t shirt like the one I'm wearing from GoVersion13. One week to go, people! Let's make this happen! Welcome to Half the Battle! Today we're going back to the comic! We're taking a look at issue 49, simply called Serpentor. Huh, I really have no idea what this comic could be about. The cover shows Destro and Dr. Mindbender stealing a freaking mummy from an Egyptian tomb. Wow, yeah, how much do you want to bet that nothing like that happens in the comic? The opening pages them doing exactly that. In fact, it looks like a straight continuation of what happens on the cover. Okay, I'll admit it, I'm impressed. That's the first time they did something like that. Pretty damn cool! By the way, the cover has the mummy looking ahead with one eye. That's properly creepy, even if it doesn't make any sense. They get caught by Egyptian police, or army, or cosplayers, or whatever, but those guns are no match for wrist rockets. While Destro is lugging the mummy, and I just realized, um, shouldn't they have flunkies to do that? To get back to Springfield, Cobra's US base of operations. We get exposition as to what the hell is going on, both here and on the next page with Cobra Commander. They've stolen the remains of ten of history's greatest warriors, so they can combine their DNA to create the perfect soldier. Did I say ten? I meant eleven. Since Mindbender will also add a freshly deceased Storm Shadow in the mix. So, while they're busy creating an abomination that's an affront to both nature and God, let's see what Ripcord and the Dreadnoughts are up to. Remember, Ripcord is disguised as Sartan because reasons. Well, they are enjoying poo-poo platters with grape soda in hollowed-out pineapples and are loving it. You know, this never gets brought up. I mean, sure, Cobra is an evil terrorist organization hell-bent on ruling the world. But they also make excellent Hawaiian food! Anyway, a Firefly and Scrap Iron bust in, claiming somebody was calling G.I. Joe from the restaurant. It is, of course, revealed to be Ripcord. So the jig is up, and he has to make a run for it. And the scene that follows is both incredibly awesome and incredibly horrifying. Ripcord carjacks a guy and takes off, but the guy's daughter is still in the vehicle. After he gets some distance, he stops to let her out. Only for the little girl to pull a freaking magnum on him and explain in explicit detail what a bullet from it could do to him. Holy crap! Talk about Dirty Harriet over there! Hit girl ain't got nothing on this kid. Now yes, that's an awesome scene, but it also illustrates just how incredibly screwed up Cobra is. Not only do they brainwash little children to be absolutely loyal to them, but they give them freaking hand cannons to boot. Cobra! Promoting family values! Well, Manson family values, anyway. She promptly turns him over to the Dreadnoughts. But as this disturbing grade school performance of Magnum Force plays out, we do learn Ripcord did give the Joes the location of Springfield, and they are sending everybody to take Cobra out. And I do mean everybody. Every single Joe we've seen so far. Everybody. Well, except one. Yeah, Sergeant Slaughter isn't in this story, even though he was just introduced last issue. A 
I guess they really didn't like the character being forced on them in the comic. Thanks to the brainwave scanner, Cobra finds out the Joes will be coming for them, and there's only one option, and that is to evacuate the town as quickly as possible. As they try to figure out how to get a whole town out in no time flat, several things happen at once. For one thing, a Joe infiltration team arrives and takes out the power station, while a figure starts emerging from the cloning vat. So yeah, as G.I. Joe is invading, Sir Pentor steps out of the tub. Buck naked, I might add. That means Destro, the Baroness, Firefly, Dr. Mindbender, Scrap Iron, and the Dreadnoughts have all seen Sir Pentor's wiener. You can never unlearn this knowledge! You're welcome! By the way, even as he's standing there giving me Dr. Manhattan flashbacks, He's monologuing about the tactics the Joes will use. Oh, and if you're wondering how he knows anything about, well, anything, since he's just only been born, the answer is a brainwave scanner. Mindbender used it to fill his brain with information. Hopefully this mind dump included a desire to put on some damn pants already! Anyway, the Joes proceed to wreck the place and blow crap up in the exact way Serpentor predicted, proving he knows his stuff. He offers to lead a delaying action to give everybody a chance to evacuate, though Destro has his doubts. After all, the guy just appeared in front of him in the buff and has only just been born, so can he be trusted? Serpentor says that the Doctor, Firefly, Scrap Iron and a Televiper can keep an eye on him to ensure his loyalty. Oh yeah, that one televiper really is gonna make all the difference! All kidding aside, I do like how they include a lowly grunt in this. Destro agrees and takes charge of the evacuation, leaving Serpentor with a company of troopers and some vehicles. And the comic ends with him giving a rousing speech to his troops, saying that this is a suicide mission, but he has no intention to die. He's gonna hold Springfield. He's not gonna throw the lives of his soldiers away, and he's going to live. It's a really good speech. And he knows this as we close out with a close-up of him whispering, Soldiers never change. They love to hear the same speeches. So yeah, next issue, G.I. Joe vs. Serpentor. And that was Serpentor the comic. And it was amazing! It's a great first half of a two-parter that's both the origin of Serpentor and the battle for Springfield. And it's a terrific lead-in for issue 50 of the comic. It was just awesome. And boy, does that suck for me! Just like with my last review on Mainframe, this thing is pretty much bulletproof from my usual snark and nitpicking. I mean, even the freaking cover, which normally always lies about the content, was spot on, and it's really the first page of the issue. So, where does that leave me? The only little nitpicky thing I can think of is that, well, a little kid, be it a boy or a girl, couldn't point a freaking magnum at somebody for more than like a second, because those things are goddamn heavy. To say nothing of holding it up in the air with one hand. Damn, if that doesn't just get buried because, hey look, kid with a freaking gun! This, combined with the enthusiasm of the troopers at the end, shows just how insidious Cobra is when it comes to getting in the heads of people. It really is a chilling insight into the organization. So yeah, I can't really add much more. It's a great issue and one hell of a setup for the next one. Go find this one and read it! I'll see you next time, everybody, when it will be the ending video of the Charity Donation Drive. One week to go, so get involved! Donate for a chance to win prizes! Wait! I found something to bitch about! On the cover, Dr. Mindbender's mustache is white, not black. Well, 
This comic is simply awful and the story is ruined. Ruined, I say!